What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be building your very first iOS app using Swift and Xcode. First and foremost, what are we going to be building? Here is the app we're going to be building. It's basically a random photo generator. We have this cool photo here, a button in our background color, and we can go ahead and tap on this. And not only do we change the photo, but we're also changing the background color. And this photo is truly, truly random. In fact, we're getting it from the internet. So this video is for absolute newbies. You never have touched Xcode ever before. You might not even have it installed. Today's your lucky day. We're gonna build your very first iPhone app. So get pumped, get excited. Smash that like button down below if you're new to iOS and the channel. Don't forget to hit subscribe while you're at it. Let's get into making your very first iOS app. We're gonna get started by opening up Xcode and creating a new project here. If you don't already have Xcode, you can get it as a free download from the Mac App Store. It is fairly large, so just be patient with it. Once we open this up to create a new project, we're gonna stick with the app template under the iOS tab, and let's start filling this information out. So we're gonna give our project a name of random photo. You want to make sure your language here is set to Swift, your Lifecycle UI kit, and your interface is Storyboard. For your organization identifier, you can give a reverse URL. What I mean by that is my website is iosacademy.io, so I have io.iosacademy. So go ahead and continue, save the project wherever you'd like. I'll toss it onto our desktop and we'll get into things. So let me go ahead and expand our window here. We're gonna close that right panel and I'm gonna jump into the viewcontroller.swift file where we will be building out our app. At the top left here, you can hit the drop down and select the simulator that you want to run this app in, you know, as we periodically build it so we can see what the heck is going on. So I'll pick the iPhone 12 Pro Max and we can actually hit this play button at the top left and you'll see that an iPhone simulator will pop up with an empty white application. So that all looking good, let's go ahead and get into our actual app building. So the first thing I'm gonna go ahead and do here is we're gonna learn how to change the background color. So this is white right now, which is great and all, but we probably want a different color um, when we tap the button like you saw in the beginning. So to change the color, we can basically just say, make the views background color a different color. So let's just go ahead and look at dot system pink and you'll see that it turns into this nice bright pink color. So cool, changing the color is easy enough. Let me actually collapse this so we can see this side by side. The next thing that we wanna go ahead and do is bring in an image view. And this is the image view that is going to show a random photo every time the button is tapped. So we're gonna go ahead and say private let image view is going to be a UI image view, UI standing for user interface. And this is going to equal open, close, curly brackets. And inside of this block, we can go ahead and say, create an image view. And it looks like my typos are all over the place today. We can then say return the image view. But there is one more thing that we wanna do in here, which is pretty important. And that thing is we don't want the image that we're gonna bring in to be stretched to look weird. So we wanna go ahead and say, we're gonna assign the content mode and we want this to maintain its aspect ratio and fit inside, rather we're gonna say fill inside the image's frame. So the frame refers to its width and height. Now for the purposes of starting out, we're also gonna give this image a background color so we can see something since we haven't assigned an actual photo to it yet, so I'll make it white. Now before we can actually see it here on our device screen, we need to add it to the view by saying view.addSubView and go ahead and pass in that image view. Now we still need one more thing to make sure we can see it and that is give the image view a height and width by assigning its frame. Now this takes a x, y, width and height 
X and Y at 0, 0 refer to the top left of your uh, view. So we'll go ahead and do that. And I'll perhaps say 300 by 300 for width and height. Go ahead and give this a run and you'll see a big white square at the top left. Now you'll also see here that the notch on this device is overlapping it, so that's not too great. So we're gonna go ahead and center this image view into our view by saying the center of the image is going to be the same as the current view's center. And now you'll see the white square in the middle of your view. So looking pretty good. The next two things that we need to do is get a random photo from the internet as well as add in a button. So let's do the random photo piece to start off with. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new function called get random photo. And I took the liberty of copying a URL string uh, beforehand that we'll go ahead and paste it in right here. It is source.unsplash.com slash random and then an image size which we have decided to use 600 by 600. Basically, if you go to this website URL, you'll get a new image every time, and this is what we're gonna use to populate our image view here. So how do we actually convert this string thing into an image? So the first thing we wanna do is actually create a URL out of this URL string. So here we can go ahead and say, create a URL with this URL string and add an exclamation uh, point at the end here to indicate to Swift that, hey, we know for a fact that this URL is valid. It exists, basically. Then we wanna get the contents of the URL via data. So I'm going to say here, guard let data, and this is going to be data, and we're going to say, hey, get the contents of the URL that I'm about to pass in. And we can go ahead and say URL, and if you're not able to, go ahead and in this else block, we're just going to stop. Now, because we want to say try to get this data, we need to put a try question mark before this data here. And once we have the data, we can basically say create a image from the data. So I'm going to assign the image views image property by saying this is a UI image and we're going to create it with the data that we should have gotten back from the internet. So if we go ahead and give this a run, uh, nothing's actually going to happen because I forgot to call this function at the bottom here of the other function, which is view did load. So I'm just going to go ahead and put that there and put parentheses at the end of it to give it a run. So go ahead and run it and boom, just like that, you'll see a photo appear. Now what's really cool about this is if you go ahead and run it again, and by the way, I'm hitting command R to run, you'll see a different photo here. But this isn't super great, right? We don't want the user to have to close and open the app every time. That's kind of a pain in the butt. So we're going to add a button to automatically, you know, find a new photo for them. So just like the image view up here, we want to go ahead and create a button. So in fact, what we can probably do is actually copy and paste this whole thing and we'll go ahead and tweak it. So first and foremost, we're going to give this a name of a button and its type instead of an image view will be a UI button. UI stands for user interface and we want a button, hence we have a UI button. Next up, we want to change the stuff in here. We're going to say this is a button of type UI button and we're going to return a UI button. Now I want to go ahead and give this button maybe a title and a background color so it looks nicer. So let's go ahead and say the background color of this is perhaps white. We want to also go ahead and set a title on this so the user actually knows what the heck they're clicking on. So we can go ahead and say this is random photo. And this is going to say for the normal state. So basically for the normal state, show this title. And then we also want to go ahead and set a title color. And I'm just going to go ahead and maybe stick with black once again for the normal state. Now we just want to go ahead and add this as a sub view just like we did for our image. So I'm going to go ahead and here say view add sub view button. And then we also want to give the button a frame. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to say that this is 20 from the left. We'll say zero from the top for a moment from Y. The width is going to be the entire width of the current view. And we're going to subtract 40, which should horizontally align this, right? Because 20 from the left and the entire width is the width minus 40. 
and we'll say the height is 50. So if you go ahead and give this a run, you'll see that the button appears at the top of your screen here. So there it is, it's overlapped by our notch, which is not good, so let's go ahead and fix that. So the way we wanna fix this is by saying that the Y is going to be view, the entire view's height, so view.frame.size.height minus 50, as well as subtracting one more thing, and I'm gonna go ahead and clean this up a little bit. We're gonna subtract the current views safe area insets.bottom. So bear with me and I shall explain what this is. So if you take a look at the button now, it's right at the bottom there, and it's actually flush up against the bottom of the view, which is not what we want, because you can see that this home bar indicator, this black bar, is overlapping the button. The safe area insets actually include uh, basically the uh, space that that bar is taking up. But the reason that it's being overlapped right now is because we're trying to assign the frame here for the button in view did load where we should be doing it in another function called view did layout sub views. So I'm gonna go ahead and override it and call super dot view did layout sub views and just move that code there. And by moving it there, you'll notice that it will get pushed up. The reason it gets pushed up is because uh, by the time this function is called, that safe area thing is set. So let me go ahead and actually make this look a little nicer. We'll say that this is 30 from the X, maybe subtracting 60. I'll go ahead and make this maybe 55, so it's a bit chunky, chunkier of a button. I will go ahead and subtract 150 just to move it up a little bit more. All right, so we're looking pretty good. The last thing that we wanna go ahead and do is actually hook up this button to do something, because right now it looks good, but it's not very useful. The way we're gonna do that is by adding a target and an action to this button, and it's really simple to do that. So we're gonna create a function here, and it's going to be did tap button. And basically, whenever we tap on the button, we're gonna go ahead and say get random photo. Now we need to prefix this func here with an at sign objc. You just need that to attach it to a button. And the way we attach it to a button is by saying add target. We're gonna say the function we wanna call resides in the current class, so self. The action is going to be a selector and the name of your function, so did tap button. And the event that we want to call this on is a simple tap. And Apple calls that a touch up inside. And that's all you need to do to hook up your button to this function here. So when I tap on it, I expect to get a new photo just like that. Look how cool that is. So this is a pretty useful app. You can open up the app and get a new photo and I can keep tapping this over and over and it'll keep getting me new photos just like that. So before we wrap up here, there is one more thing that we wanna go ahead and do. And that is we wanna add a super nice title up here because what is an app without a title telling us what it is? So the way we're gonna do that is by jumping into the main.storyboard file here, which will open up this. So here is basically a window that looks like an iPhone screen. We're gonna select this up here, and we wanna embed this in a navigation controller, which is a fancy thing that gives us access to a title. So in the toolbar, we're gonna come up to editor, we're gonna to go to embed in, and we're gonna say, hey, embed this inside of a navigation controller. And that'll give you two of these things here. Now you'll notice that this now has a bar at the top here, so we can open up that right panel, and you have an option to specify a title. So I can go ahead and give this a title, so let's go ahead and call it random photo. And you'll see that we can actually see the title appear just right there, but I want it to be a large title. So by clicking on this and checking the box for prefers large title, you'll see that the style changes to this large title here. Now if we go ahead and hit Command R one last time to build and run, you'll see that we now should have that awesome large title at the top and we have our button and image just like that. Finally, one last thing we forgot to do is we wanna change the color of the background here every time we tap on this and get a new image. So how do we do that? Well, we're gonna introduce a array of different, diff different types of colors, basically, and every time we go ahead and actually 
uh, you know, press the button, we're going to change the background color. So the way we're going to create an array is by saying let colors equals a array of user interface color. So an array of colors, and we're just going to put a bunch of colors inside of here. I'm going to use system colors, so we can say first and foremost system pink. System, we can perhaps say blue, we can say system green, and you can go on and on. I'll go ahead and add a few more so we have a little bit more uh, variety here. We'll say system yellow. Also go ahead and say perhaps purple. And let's see, what am I missing? Maybe system orange, and that's probably sufficient. And now, whenever this did tab button is called, we can also say, go ahead and make the background color one of the colors from colors. We're going to say, give me a random color back, aka a random element from our colors array. And now if we go ahead and run this, you'll see every time we tap on the button, not only will the background color change, uh, but the photo changes alongside it. So pretty darn nifty. There is your first app. It's not a lot of code. It's fairly straightforward. We have two pretty cool things going on. We have this random image being uh, shown. This is definitely the next big, big app, the big thing to hit the App Store. So uh, if you found this useful, don't forget to smash that like button down below. Leave a comment if any part of this confused you. I love to answer all of your guys' questions. And if you're into Swift or trying to learn to make an app or have a really good app idea, definitely subscribe to the channel and check out my other videos where we go really in depth about how to go from a absolute newbie to a professional app to developer to build your great idea or land your first iOS developer job. So that all said, thanks so much for sticking around. I hope you built your first app here. Thanks again so much for watching. I will see you guys in the next video.